Welcome everyone to another episode of Maverick Twitter Space, where we gather experts from across the world of Web3 to do a deep dive on issues related to crypto and DeFi. My name is Matthew Taylor, and I'm a project manager here at Maverick Protocol. This week, we're discussing the topic of NFTs in DeFi. Since the DeFi summer of 2020, we've seen a variety of decentralized applications changing the way people manage finance. As of today, the total locked value in DeFi has reached $62.5 billion, and that number continues to grow. Meanwhile, with their boom in 2021, NFTs somewhat took over the spotlight from DeFi by introducing the blockchain to a broader group of users, artists, gamers, and even realtors. While DeFi and NFTs have each fostered their own separate, thriving communities, recently we've also seen a growing adoption of NFTs by DeFi projects. From recording LP positions to enhancing community governance, NFTs and DeFi seem to be merging together to change the way we manage finance. Today, we're going to discuss how NFTs are being used to enrich the DeFi experience and what roles they might have to play in the future of decentralized finance. I'm fortunate to be joined today by three wonderful guests, Felix Hsu, CEO at ARPA and Bella Protocol, Fatima Kazieva, Product Manager at Zappa Protocol, and our very own Ada Wu, Head of Marketing here at Maverick Protocol. Uh, and I'd like to start by asking each of our guests to introduce themselves a little bit more, tell us about your role in DeFi, and perhaps more specifically, uh, what your experience is with NFTs. Felix, would you like to lead us off? Sure. Thanks. Uh, I'm very honored to be here, um, you know, with, with you guys. Um, yes. Uh, so like a brief intro about myself. My name is Felix. I'm the co-founder and CEO at ARPA. We do verifiable random number generator for NFTs using cryptography, threshold signature scheme or multi-party computation. Uh, and essentially, you know, we can provide decentralized, verifiable random numbers to help generate transparency, uh, to, ge to help the transparency uh, and fairness for NFT minting, lotteries, you know, gaming, etc. And we also uh, internally incubated Bella Protocol. Uh, it's a yield aggregator, and we also did a Uniswap V3 simulator. Um, so good friend with, uh, good friend with Alvin. Uh, an early supporter of Maverick as well. You know, glad to be bored as the first check for for Maverick as the uh, Android investor. Wonderful. We're really glad to have you with us, Felix. Uh, Fatima, can I, can I ask you to go next? Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you for having me today. Um, so my name is Fatima. Um, I'm a product manager at Zapper. So Zapper uh, dashboard. Um, if you don't know about Zapper, uh, the main thing that we're doing is that we're surfacing um, all the blockchain data um, and translating it into readable information. So you can connect your wallet on the Zapper website, and then you're able to see all of your positions from DeFi apps to NFTs. Uh, and then very recently, we rolled out DAOs as well. Um, and so we're trying to connect all of this together. Um, so this is uh, what's going on on the Zappa dashboard. And on my side, uh, I've been in the crypto space for a while. I started in crypto audit. So that was a while ago, um, back when only Bitcoin was a thing, actually. No NFTs, no DeFi. Um, and then during the DeFi summer, I discovered DeFi. Um, it all made a lot of sense to me because I had a financial background. Um, and so I was like, wow, this is amazing. Um, start using Avi and, and I'm only doing everything on DeFi. Um, in terms of my experience of NFTs, um, I would say that I am uh, started by approaching it with a lot of skepticism, but I was already at Zapper at that time. And so uh, all of these Zapper employees are true NFT degents. Um, so mainly I'm from the wagon um, of NFTs because of that. And since then, um, just because Zapper is developing a lot between the intersection of DeFi, NFTs, social layer, um, it's something that I, I really love and I really love how it, it's all connected together. Thank you very much. Uh, and last but certainly not least, Ada, could I hand the mic to you? 
Sure. Hi, everyone. Ada Wu here. I'm leading all things marketing at Maverick Protocol, where at Maverick, we're changing the way people manage liquidity in DeFi by providing our novel automated market maker, which you may also call AMM, to liquidity providers to maximize the capital efficiency. So NFT is actually one of the most popular concepts in crypto in the past two years. Um, I've been an investor myself in, F- in NFT. Also, as a marketer, I've helped to launch some GameFi projects and, of course, led the NFT initiative at Maverick. So today's episode, I'll be mostly talking about NFTs in DeFi based on what I've seen from the marketing and community perspective. And apologize, I'll be the one behind the Maverick uh, logo, uh, but you guys can also find me on Twitter um, as uh, Ada, uh, aw 3 one four one five nine two six. Thanks. Thank you, Ada. Uh, for our audience, uh, I'd like to say at the top of the space: if you have a question for the panel, please tweet it at us with the hashtag Maverick NFTs and DeFi, which you can now see in the title of the space. We'll be selecting questions for Q and A towards the end of the space. Also, feel free to make comments on the conversation, take notes using that hashtag. Um, we love to read them all. I'd also like to take this moment to let everyone know that we'll be hosting an after party in the Maverick Discord directly after the space where we'll be chatting more about this topic. Attendees who drop a question or comment on Twitter using our hashtag and who attend the Discord after party, got to do both those things, will be eligible to claim a free OAT NFT. So perhaps uh, as a group, we could start by dispelling some of the clouds that hang around NFTs. Uh, I think you know, Fatima was talking about the skepticism that some people initially approach them with. Coverage in the mainstream media and non-Web3 circles is often far from positive, either making jokes about them as expensive JPEGs or condemning them as Ponzi schemes. Even people who are active in the crypto space may not fully appreciate the potential of NFTs. So I'd like to begin by asking our panel, what do you see as the positive characteristics of NFTs or what is it that you would like people to understand better about them? Felix, could you lead us off? Sure. Um, yeah, like I mean, like I'm a big NFT degen as well. I'm big at DeFi degen and also NFT degen. Uh, I have probably like over 3,000 NFTs. Um, most of them are actually on Tezos, right? So because I really like the art community on Tezos, but unfortunately, like the liquidity is not that good, so it's not doing so well. Uh, but also like, you know, uh, generative art, um, profile pictures. Um, I have two punks uh, and some, uh, you know, some uh, clone eggs, some muffer, which I, you know, one I use for my profile picture. And I talked to the press, you know, like I was I was talking to Wall Street Journal in the in last year and also like New York Times this year. And they definitely have a lot of stereotype over the NFTs, right? Because um, traditionally, I think, you know, digital art is a very small fa- fraction, kind of kind of underrated um, art category, you know, in the traditional art world. Uh, now, you know, it's going to more, um, I would say, like NFTs. Uh, boosted the liquidity for a lot of digital art and also created many like profile picture projects that you know couldn't exist in the traditional art world so people are you know they don't understand they are jealous and uh, you know they definitely have a lot of um, opinions on it Uh, but to me I feel like uh, no matter if it's like profile pictures or digital art I think there's going to be you know, uh, more utility going forward. And, you know, you can have, uh, you can have displays in the metaverse, you know, you can use it as your identity. I think one, one wonderful thing about NFTs is to bring people together, right? So you have a community that have some common topics that you have one initiatives. Um, but I think, you know, like for now, uh, I would focus more on the community side of things. Uh, because like once you have the community, then you can build a lot of things around it. You know, you can build more utility around it. And especially like when you have a more decentralized, um, you know, community at the beginning and then people doing their own things, you know, people are working on different initiatives and then you have kind of a core uh, volunteer team, you know, to coordinate each of these work groups. I think, you know, if that, um, 
you know, can be realized, then usually the project is doing really well. So that's just my two cents on, uh, you know, NFT communities. Thank you very much. Uh, Fatima, could I ask you to go next? Yeah, sure. Um, when I when I think about, you know, the cloud, like you mentioned, the cloud that there is around NFTs, or when I talk to my non-crypto friends every so often that are asking me, um, well, why someone would buy such a, like this digital image for a ridiculous and high price. So this is, I think, the conversation that everyone had with non-crypto people. Um, and so there is a lot of criticism. I try to see it as um, the criticism comes from a lack of understanding of utility. Um, so it's mainly maybe due to people not seeing how this can be evolved, right? So almost like a lack of imagination or being closed-minded. Um, because right now it's just like, okay, I see this JPEG, but I could just right click, save it. And so that would be the same thing. So what's the utility behind it? So there's just like this barrier right now that um, in the crypto space, we'll see, we, we see the potential, we see where this is going. Um, and I feel like this is what happened also at the beginning of the internet era. So when the users were not able to see the real utility of internet and they were like, what will I do with this? And they were definitely not able to see that this could be a social network like Facebook or Twitter or um, a marketplace like eBay. So there was this like closed minded um, view of what the internet could be. And so I believe NFTs could be the same thing. Um, obviously there's things that might not work. There is, as we see, as you said, Ponzi schemes, uh, rugs, um, but overall there is also a lot of innovation happening. Um, and so, you know, we often say that to build a new feature, future, we need optimists. We need people that are optimists, not pessimists. So we need to that those people to build the crazy stuff to think about this next idea, something that we're, I know we're going to catch on, but it's especially what's happening with the intersection of DeFi and NFT protocols now that I think is amazing. Um, and so we need to be optimistic to build those cool new things and to experiment. Um, so this is how I try to diffuse, you know, the cloud around the NFTs, because uh, as Felix mentioned, the community side building is super important. Um, there's a lot of things that are going on, a lot of ideas. Um, and so in the next few years, we'll probably see um, a much bigger adoption. Yeah, but it's hard, you know. <laughs> uh, I totally agree with Fatima. Like, but then, you know, especially now it's bear market. It's very hard to convince people that, you know, NFT has a future. <laughs> so I'm not sure, Fatima, like, did you ever experience that? It's super hard. It's like um, every time that I talk to friends or family, um, and, you know, we, I feel like sometimes I'm in this, like, closed closed circle when in the crypto space you get to talk about all the amazing things that nfts have been doing and then when you step out of the crypto space then you realize that all the negative comments that people are saying um i do truly believe that it's from lack of understanding like one of the like if i think about the positive characteristics of nfts like things that we've seen with membership nfts or the very obvious one which is ownership like we take uh, ownership of nfts for granted because it's inherent to what nfts do but if we zoom out and we think about it it's really the first time that we're able to own non-fungible digital products on chain and it's pretty cool it's pretty cool that we can do that and then it trickles down to everything that membership nfts are doing or nfts related to digital identity and so um, I, I'm just thinking it's a lack of um, education right now. Um, and yeah, I, I, I like to be optimistic and obviously we're in a bear market right now. Um, but the internet in, <laughs> yeah. in 19, you know, in the 90s and uh, 2000s, it was not the same. And some people were like, this thing is going to die. Internet is useless, you know, and here we are now. Um, so I'd like to believe it's kind of the same thing. And in the meantime, those... DeFi NFT protocols are here to, you know, help us through the market. Thank you. A kind of very interesting pair of perspectives with Felix starting us off thinking about the sort of you know, the projects themselves and who's what's inside, right? And then Fatima 
drawing our attention to the context, right? The voices and the, the sentiments outside, which together come together uh, in a very interesting way. Ada, what's your take on this question? Uh, yeah, that can totally relate it to the, the other two speakers. Um, and also, I want to bring us back to, to its essence of the NFT. Something really uh, makes me feel uh, fascinated by NFT is its immutable ownership, right? So when you have an NFT, you, you really have an exclusive ownership of not only just something visible, like being an, art, being an artwork, which we're very familiar with, but also the ownership of something less visible, like data, like on-chain identity. And and that actually could unlock some great potentials for NFTs to change the DeFi landscape, which is more related to what we're talking today. And um, I, I agree that maybe DeFi and NFT together can bring us uh, a new a new possibility than uh, maybe out of the bear market as well. Thanks. Yeah, and, and your answer, I think, links us back very productively to our last space. Um, because there's this had this question of ownership and transparency and how it relates you know to to DeFi versus centralized organizations and whether people are happy to have their assets or their ownership verified by intermediaries or if they want this kind of open blockchain facilitated system of ownership. Thank you very much. So if we could expand then on this this general question and we're sort of we haven't maybe addressed it. Uh, too directly yet, except perhaps with Ada's answer. Uh, but we did touch on this idea of utility. Um, how do you think the the kind of specific features, whether it be community or utility, um, that we're talking about with respect to NFTs, make them a, a strong fit for DeFi? Or, you know, where do you see current projects actually making strong use cases for NFTs? Um, perhaps, Fatima, um, I'd love it if you could tell us more about how Zapper in particular has been developing tools to help users make the most out of NFTs. Sure. I think actually the um, DeFi use case for NFTs is so strong. Um, it's quite amazing now that we're looking into it. But, you know, just like when DeFi came along um, to break down the inefficiencies that we were seeing in TradFi, related to centralized order books, centralized liquidity, centralized database, a lot of centralization, obviously, um, but also inefficiency in times. And so the DeFi came in and solved all of this. And I think DeFi now can come in um, and do the same thing for NFTs. Um, and this is where we see those uh, DeFi slash NFT protocols being super trendy the past few months. Um, and so, those protocols are taking the criticism that we have seen in the past from the NFTs. Um, for example, you know, that JPEGs are quite illiquid. Where I think the genius part, we're not going to be able to solve the criticism with DeFi. It kind of helps you. It can create more efficient markets. It can market for more. I think we're going to touch on to that point with a specific example. Um, and so on Zapper's side, what we're doing is that we recently launched Zapper V2, like a month ago. And the release that we did was really try to, so our dashboard, we started Zapper as a DeFi dashboard. This is what um, we were branded on. Um, also because NFTs didn't exist back then. Um, and so when NFTs came along, we were like, okay, we need to integrate NFTs now. Uh, back then we were using OpenSea API, but now we are indexing our own blockchain. So we really have real um, time data. And so what we did is that we really wanted to interconnect all of those facets of Web3. So we have NFTs, we have DeFi, we have DAOs um, all in one place. Okay, so for the NFT part is what we're doing is that we're trying to create rabbit holes for discovery. Um, what I mean by that is normally you want to discover an NFT collection. So you'll go, I guess, on OpenSea and you'll start to see what is trending, what are people are buying. Now, what we do at Zapper for NFTs is that on top of that, we are adding this social layer. So instead of having um, the information siloed, we just bring everything together. So a really concrete example that I've been doing yesterday was I'm part of a DAO and I can see um, my DAO when I connect my wallet, okay? And so I can see the members 
of that DAO, I can also see the biggest holders. And what I do sometimes is I stalk them and I see what's going on in their profile, what are they buying, what are their NFTs. Um, and so I end up in that rabbit hole of, okay, this big DAO holder um, just bought a new NFT collection. So I'm, I'm ending in that NFT collection. I scroll through the NFT collection. I can also see if there's other people that are part of that NFT collection. So kind of like when you do on Twitter and you see who's following who, right? It's kind of a signal. Um, and I really think, again, that this social layer, it's super new. That added a very powerful exploration um, for everyone. Uh, so, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Felix, what do you have to say on this topic? Mm, sure. Can, can you actually repeat the question again? So we're talking um, specifically how we see the utility of NF what are the features about NFTs that we think make them a strong fit for DeFi? Or where do we see projects already ma uh, making the case for, for strong uh, fits? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, like DeFi, DeFi is definitely like the, the kind of the killer app for, um, for, all, the, uh, for all the blockchains. Uh, and NFT, the same, you know, combining NFT and DeFi is kind of a no-brainer. So, like, we see a lot of projects are doing, like, fractioning, uh, you know, like, trading kind of the NFT, uh, the NFT ETFs. Um, and there's, there's even, like, perpetuals that you can trade. Um, so, I, you know, I think around trading, there, there's, like, a lot of things that, yeah, there are a lot of things that, um, you know, like, projects can do. Uh, and on the other hand, um, I do think, you know, the utility on the social side, maybe uh, in metaverse, you know, as the digital identity, I think that that is something over the long term uh, should be the killer app for NFT utility. Uh, and, you know, uh, speaking of the infrastructure for NFTs, you know, the, you know generating NFT need randomness uh, and transparency. That's what we do at ARPA. Um, and currently, like the, the existing solution is mostly Chainlink VRF, verifiable random function, uh, but it's uh, you know it's generated by one single node. So ARPA at ARPA we are doing like multi-party uh, multi computation, so with multiple nodes, uh, and doing this verifiable random number generator. Um, yeah, so I, I think you know around NFTs uh, ecosystem there are a lot of things that that we can do. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Ada, what do you have to say about the utility of NFTs in DeFi? Um, yeah, actually, this is uh, where my passion is at. Um, so just like our uh, CTO, Bob, always said, like DeFi protocols are like money Legos. For example, like, different, different DeFi protocols can really create service built on Maverick AMM. But the set of assets which, with which to build the services is finite. Meanwhile, like NFT can be a fundamental layer or at least a part of this money lingo, which DeFi protocols can use NFTs to unlock the value of their assets. What does this mean? I, um, there are like, I can give you some specific examples. There are three characteristics of NFTs I think can really apply to this idea. Uh, one, the first one is of course uniqueness. As I previously mentioned, it's a non-fungible token, which means it's a one-off. You cannot duplicate it, and it represents a unique ownership uh, of some of the personalized data or specific positions to DeFi. In this scenario, uh, of course, the first we can we can think about is the rage-based decentralized ex exchanges like Maverick. We use NFTs to record liquidity providers' position as opposed to fungible tokens. So NFTs are really ideal for this job because each user's position in the pool is unique. It is, by definition, non-fungible. So a Maverick, not only will LPs be able to stake arbitrary distributions as opposed to just uniform ranges, but they will also actually be able to manage all their positions from one single NFT. So that's like for the DEX which we, we've seen pretty much already. And the second number is also interesting that, that we actually could use NFTs for lending protocols. Um, some of the lending protocols are actually using NFT to record their on-chain identities. And Goldfinch actually is one of the examples in this category. They have this unique identity, uh, UID and NFT, 
while they use NFTs to open the access to KYC users on the Lending Protocol, while also protecting their personal information. It's kind of um, both shield the, the privacy, but also uh, open the gate to a more trad-fight world for DeFi. And the second uh, characteristics, which uh, we previously mentioned pretty a lot, is that the, the, da the data on chain and the NFT on chain, it actually by nature has transpar transparency and the immutability. And a great example for this is like you can use NFT to trace the ownership of an NFT and in including the historical price. So one of our partner projects, Project Galaxy, is actually uh, quite uh, excellent in this area. So for anyone here who's not familiar with Project Galaxy, they're a collaborative credential infrastructure that like helps brands and communities to build better communities and products in Web3 with NFTs and credential data. So Project Galaxy, they actually enable DeFi projects to launch campaigns uh, for the DeFi community's members to complete tasks and mint NFTs on Project Galaxy. And uh, for like the our previous uh, partnership with Project Galaxy, it actually really helps DeFi projects to acti activate and understand who are their community and how can their community help them to build a better project. Um, and the last um, feature I would say NFT has is really suitable for DeFi and it can be uh, creative and have a great potential is utility and reality. So the native value of NFTs you're coming from, uh, we all know part of is utility and rarities, which actually creates great investment potential itself and thus can bring actual value to the DeFi world. Um, one great example we have is at Mavic, we actually, like, while we're work, working closely with Project Galaxy, we leverage NFTs as incentives and as a track record of the early adopters, users, and contributors of our community. We issued three, we're issuing three Mava NFT tokens, and the first one we had actually over 10,000 minted. It was a mass adoption, or I would say uh, participation of the event. While the second campaign we dropped a Mava 2, we actually limited the NFT eligibility for only the community members who contributed and helped us build a better test net uh, and launch a better product. And as a result of that, we actually see a higher, com uh, higher quality of contribution from our community. And we get like around 200 uh, Mava 2 NFT mean. So the upcoming Mava 3 NFT we were dropping uh, in Q3 and Q4, early Q4, uh, will be even further more real. And all three Mava NFTs will later represent different values in our com community operation governance and more areas. And it's, it's been helping, we've been seeing like really helpful uh, community members coming up from through these NFT campaigns. And I think that's something really interesting for DeFi communities as well. Thank you very much, Ada. Um, and as, as we start to get more of these wonderful answers from our guests, if you have questions for them, I'd like to remind you to please tweet them using the hashtag Maverick NFTs in DeFi. You can see it in the title of the space. We are combing the comments and questions to pull out some that we can ask at the towards the end of the space. So um, Ada kind of, in some ways, there presented something of the the bull case for uh, NFTs with DeFi projects as a way of organizing, mobilizing, and rewarding communities. Um, and perhaps maybe I could could ask our other guests if they have, you know, they can give us any kind of um, other perspectives or complicating perspectives on this, because you know we have a in some ways a fairly straightforward NFT uh, program right now at Maverick, but some DeFi protocols are launching really quite robust NFT projects involving NFT. I'm sorry, um, evolving NFTs, or uh, we might say uh, you know sort of elements of GameFi, and such that the projects seem to start you know the, their NFTs seem to start to straddle the worlds of utility and collectible. Do you think that this kind of thing is a good move for DeFi projects or would they be better off staying in what we might call a single lane? Putting this question another way, um, Felix, Fatima, do you think collectability presents any complication to utility? Uh, Felix, do you have any thoughts on this? Mm, sure. Um, 
I think it's it's about two different mind uh, two different mindsets. Um, so to me, you know, as a art uh, collector, you know, I I would tend to focus more on you know if I if I like the art, right? If I like the artist. Um, however, you know, um, so we also do early stage investments. But as like an investor for tokens or right for crypto projects, I would say like if I like the projects, then I'll probably like participate and maybe you know in some ways i can purchase the uh the community like the community nfts uh, because i like the projects right so it boils down to uh, who's the creator of it right so it's whether the artist or is the project right so if, I, if i you know like I, I do think that designing kind of a game fi mechanism for nfts uh can boost uh, can maybe can boost a lot of utility uh, and maybe down the road has better performance, uh, but still, you know, like the like the uh, the real, you know, right? The the real uh, game is really the the project itself. Yeah. So that's just my two cents. Thank you, Felix. Um, Fatima. Yeah, I agree with uh, Felix regarding the artist. You know, this is boils down to: Do you like the art? Um, either it's a DeFi protocol that's launching something, or if it's not the art, is there like utility, something behind it, some sort of membership um, versus like a, an artist that is launching uh, their NFT collection. Um, so that I don't see any problems in, in those type of experiencing in both sides, really. Um, again, I think it can be beneficial. It's like experimental, right? So we are at the stage where we are experimenting things and we don't know what is good, what is bad. Um, I think it can be really good from a community building perspective. So DeFi protocols have very strong communities around them. Um, they obviously, some of them have the token side, um, but adding on top of that, an NFT collection can be super powerful, something that you can craft or design, make it, um, yours. Um, we had something similar at Zapper at some point where we were experimenting with gamification seasons. So very quickly, what we did was that we, we wanted users to, to discover the platform. So really from a product perspective. And so by trying new features, you were gathering points. And with those points, you were able to mint NFTs. They were really not expensive. It was really just, you know, to encourage people to try the platform and to try swaps, token, uh, swapping tokens or bridging um, things that they might not know that Zapper was doing. Um, so this was very experimental. And to be honest, some things were not ideal. Um, we experienced some botting on the gamification side. It's very hard, you know, to create civil resistance around gamification right now. But overall, it was also fun. The community loved it and the people on Discord loved it. The ones that were actually using Zapper anyways got to get Zapper NFTs. Um, so I really don't see anything wrong with um, the experimenting part of crossing between DeFi and NFT. Great, thank you. Your, your two answers made a lot of sense. In some ways, it's not a direct analogy, but your responses were making me think about, about Apple and the way they sort of merged utility with, with a strong sense of design, right? And so some people came to or come to Apple products because they just like the way they look, and some people come to them because they like the way they work, but those two things are not mutually exclusive and can, in fact, be right reinforcing. Um, we can't really have this conversation this week uh, without taking a moment to talk about PseudoSwap, the decentralized marketplace NFTs that launched in June and that has facilitated over $16 million in volume since its launch. PseudoSwap is using AMMs and bonding curves to sell NFTs, which is about as DeFi as you can get. Um, but while many people believe that more decentralization is always a good thing, others have raised concerns about how this marketplace is cutting creators off from the royalties that they earn through OpenSea and other more centralized platforms. So I'm just interested in what are your opinions on pseudo swap? Is this a step forward for NFTs and DeFi, a step sideways, something else? Um, Fatima, do you have a thought on this? Yes, um, I am going to say right away, I am super, super excited about PseudoSwap. Um, I really think it ties perfectly with everything that uh, we've been seeing in terms of inefficiencies. Um, so again, what I was saying regarding, 
you know, DeFi came along to solve inefficiencies on the TradFi space. And now we're also experiencing inefficiencies in the NFT space. Like the most common thing that we know is that it's not the most liquid assets, right? So think about a time that you tried to sell one of your NFTs and it took days and maybe, you know, the you'd cancel the, uh, the transaction at some point. Um, also on OpenSea, if you're using OpenSea, they're really using a centralized order book. So again, kind of goes against the whole movement of decentralization and everything that DeFi achieved. So what PseudoSwap is trying to solve is anyone can be a liquidity provider, but now a liquidity provider for NFTs, right? So just like what we've seen with Uniswap and SushiSwap, now instead of your tokens, you can put your NFTs in. Um, the good thing with that is that it makes assets more liquid. Um, you can have more accurate prices instead of trying to guess at what price you should purchase that NFT. Um, it's a huge plus, really. Um, you can also control slippage much more on NFT buys, especially if you are uh, trying to buy a lot of NFTs or sweep the floor, like we say. Um, so for me, it's, it's quite incredible to see the financial mechanism of DeFi being applied on a protocol like that. Um, I, I also think that those um, AMMs, so there's PseudoSwap, there's also others, they can really make the NFT market grow. Right now we're in a bear market. We also know that transactions on NFT have been quite low um, because it can add more market participants. Um, we also know that it already added more market participants. Um, some people are not that happy, you know, with the fact that we have institutional investors that will start buying our JPEGs. Um, but it's also a good thing because we want to have participants on a specific class asset. So I just think it can be a good thing everywhere. And I'm a, a, a big fan of uh, their protocol. Thank you. Felix, do you see the say, feel the same way? Do you have another perspective? Uh, I I do like pseudo swap because I yeah I do think you know like liquidity is most yeah is maybe the most important thing right so think about blockchain uh, I think trading is um, probably the uh, the the most you know the 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 most valuable application right now right so uh, and then we've seen you know before Uniswap there were there were used to be you know uh, order book DEXs on Ethereum but. Uh, eventually Uniswap uh, pr prevail, right? So I think it's probably the same thing with NFTs um, because a lot of people like actually compare uh, PseudoSwap with um, probably other, like probably fraction, uh, you know, fractional uh, platforms, right? But I, but I do see a big difference between the two because eventually you don't want to trade your NFTs uh, like, uh, like fungible tokens, right? So like you do want to get one NFTs. Um, so, uh, because, you know, it has a lot of utility and it can represent your, your digital identity, et cetera. So I, I do think that PseudoSwap, um, will boost the, uh, the liquidity overall. And also we are probably going to see, you know, um, NFTs with larger, ser larger, uh, collections, um, because, you know, the way the, the larger the collection, the better the liquidity, uh, with something like PseudoSwap. Uh, but I, I'm also a little concerned about the, uh, the, the, the creator loyalty part because, um, yeah, because that is kind of the uh, bread and butter for the NFT space, right? So uh, we do want to get more creators, artists. So we'll see. Yeah. Thank you. As someone, someone who, who told us that you come to the space, you know, as someone who's interested in, in artists and art, it makes a lot of sense uh, that you'd have to add, want to add that caveat at the end. Thank you. Um, we're going to start transitioning towards our Q&A section. Uh, and before we get there, I just want to ask the panel uh, if you see any possible integrations between DeFi and NFTs that we have yet to explore. Uh, what do you want to see DeFi project projects doing with NFTs in the future? Alternatively, are there any DeFi or NFT projects that you're particularly excited about right now, besides, say, PseudoSwap? Um, Felix, I'll pass this question to you first. Well, uh, yeah, that's that, that's a good question. Um, let me think. Yeah, probably Tina goes first. <laughs> 
Are you sure, okay with that? I can, yeah, for sure. Um, I was um, so it's uh, I was looking at some stuff that are happening besides pseudo swap, obviously. Um, that I haven't tried. I, I don't think actually we haven't launched, but um, NFT lending protocols I think is a great idea. It's also um, you know doesn't have the same complexity or reputation than an AMM. You know, AMM at some point got a bad reputation because people were losing money on it. It's a lending protocol when you think of Aave, for example. This is where I started my DeFi journey. Much, much easier to grasp as a concept. And so there's a project called Asteria um, that some of you may know that is uh, launching soon. That means that what you're going to be able to do with those lending is you're going to be able to put your NFT in collateral and take out a loan in ETH. Um, I think that can be especially good for a slower market, you know, when you want to put your DPEG to work and you don't want to uh, sell them. Um, so I'm excited to see how that goes. I know there's a couple of others that are trying to explore the same lending protocol dynamic. Um, and then yesterday I stumbled, uh, when I was on Telegram and I saw a project called Reservoir, which is doing a shared liquidity order book. So. I mentioned earlier that OpenSea has a centralized order book. And so if you go on OpenSea, you have their order book. And then if you go on Rarible, it's another order book. Um, and they're trying to bring everything together in the same place. So remove the centralization around it. Um, both of the protocols I haven't tried, but what I like again is really all those ideas that now are, are, are coming up. And it really feels like DeFi, summer when we were seeing the development of Uniswap that arrived or sushi swap stuff like that i think it's very exciting especially during a bear market can we keep us um busy thank you very much are you ready now felix or would you like ada to go first sure um yeah I, i'm actually like i still look at uh i still look at art mostly like from the nft side um you know like i'm a big fan of uh, Outland, right? So because Outland, you know, collaborate with some good good artists like James Jeans. Uh, I think today they actually announced the, uh, you know, the minting of uh, Ian Chance, like Three Phase. So all these projects that I'm big fan of, uh, and also, uh, and also have their pass, so I can mint all these NFTs. Um, yeah, to me, um, I would say, you know, I care more about the art part versus the. Uh, kind of the financial part uh, for NFTs. Uh, you know, like the, the reason why is, you know, we have a ton of uh, fungible tokens. We have a lot of wonderful, you know, token projects, crypto projects. Um, so, you know, like uh, I think NFTs really give me some fresh air, <laughs> you know, a part of all these like technical uh, cryptography stuff. Yeah. So that's why I really like Outland. It's, it's just just as you say in a in in a space where it's so common to think so much about uh, technology and finance. It is kind of it's for me also a breath of fresh air to hear talk about you know that you can have a passion for art in here as well. That's great. Thank you, Ada. What are you what are you excited about, or where do you see NFTs and DeFi going in the future? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I was actually talking uh, with our last Twitter space speaker, Token Bryce, just last week. And and we both figured out that one, one direction is most exciting for us in, in uh, NFTs in DeFi, that is NFTs in lending. Uh, for, of course, his project, Chicken Bonds, are, are using NFTs as one of essential product features as well. But what we uh, discussed last week is about MakerDAO Vault. Imagine currently, if you want to get out of your vault, you, you can only like repay the loan, withdraw the fund, and if someone else wants your vault, you cannot just transfer the ownership of the vault to them on chain. It has to go through multiple steps to achieve, and basically it's, it's sort of impossible. But so let's say if we can one day tokenize our maker vault with an NFT that represents our ownership of that vault, and then this transfer, this tran the transfer of ownership of your vault to another person become totally doable. So just to, to echo previous Felix's point is that liquidity is one of the most important things in DeFi, which 
is also what William Maverick, of course. Um, I think ut utilizing DeFi uh, NFTs presents uh, in lending actually can solve this problem a lot. And I think that's something will be really interesting to discover. Thank you very much, Ada. Um, we're going to move to the Q&A portion of our discussion now. Uh, we have time for a few questions. Again, if, if you do have a question for the panel, um, there's maybe time to sneak it in under the wire. Please tweet it at us using the hashtag you see in the space title, Maverick NFTs and DeFi. Um, I'd also like to remind everyone at this point that we'll be having an after party in the Maverick Discord when the space finishes, where you can keep talking about everything our guests have had to say. And we've had a bunch of questions coming in. Uh, I will say a number of them are, are specific questions about Maverick's own NFT collection. Uh, and instead of referring those questions to our guests, I will just tell everyone here who's interested in that topic, uh, advise you to tune in tomorrow at 11, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern on Discord to our community town hall and AMA, uh, where we'll be actually uh, specifically answering a lot of those questions about the Marva NFT uh, and what it can do for you. So we'll leave those questions for tomorrow. Um, we could perhaps start off with what I thought was a really interesting question. Um, it might be, I don't know if anyone will have an immediate answer to it, but I think it's actually really intriguing. So someone has asked us through the hashtag on Twitter, whether or not, whether soul soulbound NFTs, which is a concept I've heard Vitalik talk about, right? The idea of an NFT that is non-transferable. Will soulbound NFTs open up any new utilities for NFTs in DeFi? Um, what do people think about this question? Does anyone have a thought on it? I think soulbound NFT is more on the identity side, but identity, you know, like this, um, on-chain identity is very important and it actually can be I think there should be some use cases in, in DeFi like something that I can think of like for example like I I minted a passport I don't even remember the project's name but I uh, minted a passport a while ago like maybe a year ago and then with that passport I can you know enjoy some perks maybe enjoy some higher interest rate or some you know, like uh, like special uh, member reward, right? So, so it's the same with Soulbound NFTs because, you know, it's not transferable. You know, you can't trade it. However, you you know, you can enjoy some other perks, right? Um, and, you know, in, in that way, um, I think there should be plenty of uh, di like, di like user differentiating tool things that you can do with it. Thank you. That's a great answer. Um, I don't know if Ada or Fatima want to jump in on this. If not, we can move to another one. Sure. For me, um, soulbound tokens, I was thinking of, well, it's definitely related to uh, identity, digital identity. Um, being in this space, um, like what I would love to see is like this NFT, non-transferable, where I build my identity and I build my resume. So we've seen a lot of narrative regarding resume. Um, where, you know, you earn badges depending on the communities you're part of or on the things you participated or maybe you're a white hat. Um, and so you're building this community, uh, this resume and it's really important for you, like you're really holding it to it, um, can really solve a lot of problems related to Sybil attacks um, because then people, you know, don't want to have multiple accounts because it's quite uh, complicated to, to cater to, you know, to all of your activity. You want all of your activity on one NFT. Um, so from that type of perspective, um, I really like it. Um, if we can imagine a world in crypto or in Web3 where everyone has their digital identity in an NFT and then you can go and verify whatever that person is tweeting or whatever that person is claiming to do, you know, saying, oh, I own this board ape. Well, you can just go ahead and see and verify. Um, yeah, that's uh, my perspective on that. Thank you. And, and Ada, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Just to uh, agree with both of speakers that on-chain identity is definitely a, one of the um, most important features that we can use leverage NFTs in DeFi. So DeFi has this feature that we actually highly protect the DeFi users' privacy. While they, there's a lot of value unlocked 
in between DeFi and TradFi, which means traditional finance. While most of tradi- traditional finance players are actually interested in getting DeFi plays, but get blocked by like some of the compliance reasons or KYC steps. So if we can really truly utilize this on-chain uh, identity by using NFT, it can both protect users' privacy and also unlock the the value, the, the tremendous of the values in the TradFi market for the DeFi users. That will be probably really a, a great potential for us to see in the future. Thank you all very much for your answers to uh, what I thought was a very interesting question. Um, we are actually starting to run short on time, but we had two different questions come in, one over Twitter and one on Discord, both of which I think sort of look, look to the future a bit. And so I kind of want to present them to you both and give both questions to the group and give you the opportunity to, to, to speak, say, on one um, briefly uh, as your kind of final thoughts. Um, so we had one question over Twitter, which um, you know I think is a question that's on a lot of people's minds when it comes to NFTs, which is, are we now in a decline period for NFTs? And I think this is probably coming from, you know, we know 2021 was the year of NFTs. And then obviously, we've seen, you know, the, the, the floor prices and the markets kind of falling over 2022. So is this a decline period? Or perhaps, you know, can we expect there to be, you know, an upswing? Alternatively, um, we had a wonderful question on Discord, uh, I thought, um, where someone asked, asked, is asking you sort of to make a prediction, I think. So, you know, we've had DeFi, we've had NFTs, as they say, in Q4 2021, it was all metaverses. Uh, can you, you ready to make a call on what, what the next big trend in crypto might be? So, yeah, in the short time we have left, please feel free to to tackle either one of those questions. Um, anyone got an uh, initial response? Uh, I can take on the market cycle one. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think now is definitely bear market for everything, uh, not only like NFTs, but also just you know, total in general. Um, I think the reason is more on the macro side, you know, Fed, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of cutting out the uh, liquidity. I think that is the biggest part. But what what we've seen over the cycles, you know, in the past, is that you know during the bear market is you can get the best alpha. Uh, and I think it's the same with NFTs. Uh, we are actually in the second. It's a, yeah, it should be the the first bear market, first real bear market for NFTs, um, and. I do think a lot of the NFTs are going to disappear, but maybe the 1% that will persist, uh, they'll become like phenomenal in the next bull run. Uh, this market is always cyclical. Um, so, you know, like, so like, I, I think, you, you know, you should really like pay attention to the ones that still have active communities, still working on uh, maybe different utilities, or maybe like as an artist, you know, working on different uh, innovative um, mechanisms, right? So I think that is uh, something I, I would focus on. Great advice there from someone we know uh, understands a lot about NFTs. Fatima, any thoughts on either the, the state of NFTs or, you know, want to call the next trend? <laughs> I'm not going to call the next trend just because um, I've, it's super hard. I've always been wrong. I've been in this space for a couple of years and you kind of never know what's going to come. It's surprising. I feel like it's a new thing every time. Um, but to uh, continue on what Felix was saying was, um, yes, there is a decline. I mean, the metrics are just showing um, what they're showing. Um, but it's kind of also the first time that there is a much bigger uh, economic aspect. So the macro side where we might hit the recession. And this is the first time that it happens for crypto. Um, and so it's kind of normal that there's not that much money being transacted on the NFT side, on the DeFi side. Um, I'm not too scared about that. And again, like during the DeFi winter, this is when the good protocols, we call them the blue chips, they rose, they built and they became blue chips after the DeFi winter. And so again, this 1% that Felix is mentioning um, is gonna come up bigger, stronger. Um, I'm really, it's just the question of how long this is gonna take. And in the meantime, um, 
I do think that those DeFi, um, those DeFi NFT protocols that we talked, like PseudoSwap, um, are interesting, especially during this bear market, because they're bringing other players in the space. Um, the institutional investors have money, obviously, and they want to be exposed, you know, to the asset cost of NFTs, which is a really good thing for us. It's not a bad thing. Um, we don't want them to buy all of our NFTs, but it's a good thing that they want exposure on it. That means that they believe in it at some point. Um, and so I think it's a good thing during a bear market. Um, and I just think we need to uh, pull through the, the bear cycle. Thank you. And Ada, could I I'll pause it to you for a final thought on this? Yeah, sure. Totally agree. So while we see the price dropping, we actually also see more and more people asking the questions rather than like what's how many ETH or, or how many uh, how much is this NFT, but like what is the utility? What what are the um, the actual business model behind this NFT? So I would say it's just like the DeFi market, like we coming from the 2017, and when we have a DeFi summer, the market, uh, the, the industry actually evolved from the 2017. So I would say that when market is down, uh, the ones that actually survive and stand uh, afterwards actually can possibly bring this industry to another involvement. Uh, and I think uh, even though we're in the bear market, uh, there's a lot of, I would say, it's actually good things to, to filter out and find the really good ones standing. Thank you. So our panel's sort of united in their optimism, even in this bear market, which is a wonderful note, I think, to end on. Thank you to everyone for joining us today. I know that I certainly learned a lot from listening to our guests discuss this topic, and I hope you did too. Uh, I hope you'll join me in dropping uh, an emoji on your Twitter app to thank Felix, Fatima, and Ada for donating their time to make this space so engaging and interesting. As a reminder, there will be an after party in the Maverick Discord. There is a link uh, pinned in a tweet to the top of the space where you can join the rest of the Maverick family to chat more about all of the ideas that have been uh, investigated today. If you tweeted a question or comment using our hashtag, and if you then attend the after party, if you do those two things, you'll be eligible to claim a free OAT NFT from us. Thank you again, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, night, wherever you may be.